Many confuse two important beliefs for Christians, the virgin birth and the Immaculate Conception. Why? Because while much good has come from Christianity, historically speaking, one of the very ugly things has been its distorting human sex and sexuality into something dirty. Don't blame Jesus or Paul for that. Neither were responsible. Instead, second century followers of Paul recontextualized Paul and they are to blame. So too are Christians who followed them and failed to correct this. Today, when we hear immaculate, we think clean, and so this connection lends to confusion. Mary is absolutely clean, and it therefore makes sense that she never got dirty from sex. So the popular misunderstanding is to confuse the immaculate conception of Mary with the virginal conception and birth of Jesus. And the history is even more confusing. Virgin is a word that has evolved over the centuries, mixed up as it is with Mary as an evolving symbol herself. When post-apostolic Jesus group people called Mary virgin in the second century, were they necessarily talking about her sexual status or the condition of her physical organs and hymen? Originally, virgin meant a female of marriageable age, which in the ancient circum-Mediterranean world of the Bible was just after her menarche. But the meaning of virgin and virginity evolved. As it changed, the physical virgin birth became an essential Christian belief for many. But that didn't happen really before the 5th century. The, the notion of virgin birth as a theological or as a biological miracle, all right, has become a, a theological cornerstone of faith for, you know, probably the majority of Christians in our era. Not so in, in antiquity. Um, that really didn't become even an important factor uh, un until Augustine. Augustine cooked up the notion that original sin was passed along biologically. All right. Well, we can't have a sinful Jesus so we got to have him born without that bad gene. Well, in antiquity, people knew the existence of the sperm. They did not know the existence of the egg. So if we don't have a father passing along the bad sperm that would have made him guilty of original sin, we can get a pure Jesus. Um, that, was the, that began to make the, the, virgin, the biological virgin birth ever more important theologically. It was to protect the sinlessness of Jesus. Well, in the 18th century, when they, dis uh, they discovered the existence of the egg, now we got a problem. Ancient people did not understand sexual reproduction. Ancient Mediterranean fathers were called potent or impotent, like seed while Mediterranean mothers were fertile or barren, like fields. We still haven't kicked the habit of this antiquated language, folks. To ancients, fathers alone generate offspring. The whole essence of a newly born boy or girl, to the ancient mindset, derived entirely from the father. Hence, fathers alone beget. And we see this language in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 16, the Matthean genealogy for Jesus. The mother serves merely as a passive nurturing agent who conceives and bears children. The way ancients saw it, children are begotten of mothers or begotten in mothers, but not begotten by mothers. The man does all the work all the woman has to do is hold on to the seed, thought the ancients. She can't even do that right. Look at all those miscarriages. That's how people thought for a long time, folks. The woman was seen entirely as a passive player in sexual reproduction. That's how Augustine thought. Since the male is the only one who contributes genetically to the offspring by his tainted sinful seed, Augustine saw that it was essential that sinless Jesus could not have had a human father. He eisegetically read his new understanding into the New Testament library, only recently assembled and canonized. 
Since the mother gives nothing to the child except nurturing, she cannot pass along any biological original sin contaminated in her blood. So the church didn't need Jesus to have a sinless mother yet. But over a thousand years later, in the 18th century, the human egg was discovered. It turns out that half of everything comes from the mother. Now to maintain a biologically sinless Jesus, you also need a sinless mother. Now the belief in the Immaculate Conception had evolved over a long period of time, but declaring this belief a dogma came by way of a microscope. Therefore, Pope Pius IX declared this dogma December 8, 1854. So now we got to have a perfectly clean Mary in order to get a clean Jesus. So the question becomes, if, if Augustine was the one who sort of made it this whole biology question important, what about before that? One of the things you quickly discover was that virgin birth was a common story in antiquity. Julius Caesar was born of a virgin. Octavius Augustus Caesar was born of a virgin. Alexander the Great was born of a virgin. Why? One of the things that ancient people did was when a lowlife gave birth to a son, they expected that son to be a lowlife. When a great person had a son, he was supposed to be a great person. What did not compute with them was when a lowlife turned out to be have a, a son who's a great person. That didn't make no sense. And so they argued that it could only happen if God was in some unique way or the gods were in some unique way involved. That can produce greatness from bad genetic stock. All right. So that was one factor for the ancients. The other is, they used the term virgin. It didn't have anything to do with biology. It was an honor title. They could talk about a virgin mother. And what they meant was, that if a woman is truly honorable, you give her the most honorable title our society has for a woman. And she has that title her whole life. So what would have surprised early Christians is not that they called Mary a virgin, but that they call Mary a virgin. She's a peasant girl. That's not the kind of people who got that title. So for the earliest Christians, it was an honor title, not a biological title. And it only became biological after Augustine. And we have the hokey, you know, immaculate conception thing when we discover the egg. And somehow it has, it has taken on meanings it never had. And I should point out to you that not only are Matthew and Luke the only writers in the New Testament who mention it, nobody else does either for several hundred years. So you got to put these things in a little historical context. <laughs>